Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. wonderful overview of Indian mathematics, this was the Srinivas. So, in this talk basically I will be covering mathematics in Vedas and Shulva Sutras. So, this will be done in two parts, Vedas as all of you know is the most ancient scripture that is available to us today and the Shulva Sutras form a part of what are known as Kalpa Sutras, which itself is a part of Vedanga. So, what we will be covering is basically the mathematical references that can be found in Vedas and the geometry, arithmetic, algebra, etcetera. So, which can be found in the class of texts called Shulva Sutras. The purpose of Vedas is obviously not to deal with mathematics. So, it has to do something with the relation of human and nature and uh, the propitiation of nature in the form of a divine being through humans etcetera. So, this is primarily the content of Vedas and in fact, it has been succinctly stated in one of the most ancient texts called Vedanga Jyotisha, wherein the purpose of Veda has been very clearly defined as Vedahi Yajnartham Abhipravruttaha. So, Ajnartham Abhipravrtaha is primarily so propitiation of uh, the divinity. So, but you might have also heard uh, perhaps in the uh, overview by Professor Srinivas, wherein Mahavira Charya, so while defining the scope of mathematics, he says Laukike Vaidike Chapi. Tatha samayike piyaha vyaparas tatra sarvatra sankhyanam upayujyate. So, you will see mathematics in every aspect of life, whether it is worldly, whether it is Vedic, whether it is religious, and so on. So, anyway, so what we will be trying to do is trace out some references which can be found in Vedas and then see what one can derive from those references with regard to the knowledge of mathematics which was available in those ancient periods. So, this is primarily the idea of touching upon the most ancient scripture, so Vedic scripture and then we will move on to Shulva Sutras. So, in this lecture we will start with references in Vedas and then move on to discuss what are the Shulva Sutra texts. So, what do they deal with and what does the term Shulva Sutra mean? And one of the most important things, so as I was mentioning Vedahi Ajnartham Abhipravrtaha, when you have to perform sacrifices, you have to create necessary platform, so fire altars and so on. So, and uh, the construction, so that is involved in creating such platforms, etcetera, is the primary content of the text called Sulva Sutras. So, the most important thing is to find out the cardinal directions. So, that is one of the most interesting. Uh, experiments which can be done with a very very simple device called Shanku, I will be discussing that and this is a prerequisite for starting Ajna. So, for doing Ajna you have to create a certain Ajna Shala and Ajna Shala cannot be constructed without knowing the exact directions. So, that is what we mean cardinal directions primarily mean east, west, north, south. So, one may naively think that after all by looking at sunrise I will be able to determine the direction, but that is not the case because of Uttarayana and Dakshinayana sun has northerly and southerly motion. So, we need to conduct a very simple experiment, but this experiment is one of the most foolproof experiments. So, we will be discussing all that. So, then we will also deal with uh, the construction of certain geometrical objects. So, square circle, see uh, when I say Bodhayana's method of construction of square. So, this may look pretty simple. So, after all, so if I need to construct a square, I need to draw a line and then I can have a set square, I can have a t square and then I can draw this, I mean what is the great deal about it. So, that is not the thing, they did not have t square or set square, but then uh, Bothayana has discussed a very interesting method by which all that you need is a couple of nails and then a rope. So, with that you will be able to construct a perfect square. 
So, that is what we will be discussing there and then we will be moving on to what is today called Pythagorean theorem or Pythagoras theorem. So, we call it Sulva Sutra or Sulva theorem and there are different versions of it Bodhayana version, Manava version. So, we will be discussing that and then we will also see how the triplets have been listed in these ancient texts and then application of Sulva Sutra. So, all that will be discussed in this lecture. Ah, before proceeding further, so we will try to look into this uh, Upanishad, so which is a part of the Veda. So, there are primarily 10 principal Upanishads and one of them is uh, Mundaka Upanishad. So, where does this mathematics fall within this Vedic corpus of knowledge? So, here we have a passage in Mundaka Upanishad, so which tries to classify the, the, the body of knowledge itself into two groups, one is called Para, the other is called Apara. Para deals with most fundamental questions. So, who am I? So, what is the purpose of my existence? What is my connection with this all that? So, this is uh, the domain of para and uh, apara. So, all the other things are put under apara. In fact, even the Vedas, so the Karmakanda section of Vedas falls under apara vidya. So, we have the four Vedas as it is listed. So, Rig Veda, Yajur Veda, Sama Veda, Atharva Veda. Then we have the six Vedanga, Siksha, Kalpa, Vyakarana, Nirukta, Chanda, Jyotisha. It is under this Jyotisham, the mathematics also is clubbed into. So, Ganitam is not listed, but the development of mathematics as you might have seen, so is primarily in trying to solve problems in astronomy. And in fact, uh, as uh, we will see later, so the connections between the mathematical development and the application in astronomy will become quite evident when we look into the later part of the course as to why they had to solve first order intermediate equation and so on in the later part of the course. So, this is how uh, one is able to relate mathematics with the most uh, ancient scripture. So, this Jyotisham uh, includes Ganitam too. So, coming to Vedas as such, I was mentioning that uh, we find uh, some references here and there and references will be only in the form of primarily numbers. So, Sankhyanam Upayujyate. So, when he said so, Sankhyanam is primarily science of calculation, calculating the number of days, so calculating on which day what has to be performed and how many number of days in which the sacrifice has to be done. So, there are various other things and how periodically they have to be done and uh, the numbers which we find in the Vedic literature are mostly related to the propitiation which is done towards a certain particular deity. For instance, so this uh, this mantra which you can see here, Chataya Swaha, Sahasraya Swaha, Ayutaya Swaha, Niyutaya Swaha. So, this uh, basically lists all the powers of 10 starting from 10 to the power of 2 to 10 to the power of 12. So, Shata refers to 10 to the power of 2 and uh, towards the end of this passage you find Parardhaya Swaha. So, Parardha refers to 10 to the power of 12. The list of all the words which refer to the power of 10 has been listed in this. Similarly, in the next one, so we find ekachame, tisrashchame, panchachame, so we find all the odd numbers listed here and chatasrashchame, ashtavuchame and so on, the power multiples of 4. So, these things are listed. Further, there is an interesting uh, passage in Rig Veda. So, here in the passage Vimshati, Trimshati, Chatvarimshat, Panchashat, Shashti, so all the multiples of 10. So, I am just uh, quoting this in order to uh, convey a certain message that these people have been quite conversant with the decimal place value system. So, in fact, this is one of the most fundamental discoveries. So, we will uh, deal with that exclusively in a lecture later, but then you can see that so, all the numbers which have been mentioned, for instance, look at this mantra 3 nishata, 3 sahasra, nyagnim, trimshascha, devanava, chasaparyan. So, this mantra 3 nishata, 3 sahasrani, trimshascha, devaha. So, nava refers to 9 and the rest 3, 3, 3, 9. So, this is a very interesting number. So, if you look at, so this is basically sum of 33, 303, 373, and you get uh, this particular sum. And this number is also very close to uh, a period of 18 years. 
there have been uh, articles written wherein they try to trace the origin of this number and uh, what is so special about this number. What is interesting here is to note that there is unambiguous evidence, so by which we will be able to see that the Vedic priests have been very, very conversant with the decimal place value system. And we also have uh, this uh, mantra pur namada pur namidam pur nat as a shanti mantra of isha vasya upanishad so this shanti mantra speaks of the notion of infinity purna purnasya purnamadaya purnameva avashishyate so you take purna from purna and what remains is also purna so this is very close to the notion of infinity now i move on to the shulva sutra text so as i was mentioning earlier the Shulva Sutra texts form a part of what are known as Kalpa Sutras. In fact, Kalpa Sutra includes Shrauta Sutra, Grihya Sutra, Dharma Sutra and Shulva Sutra. So, Shrauta Sutras are aphorisms which have to do with uh, certain rituals which are done for the societal welfare. So, Shrauta Sutras, Yagas etcetera. So, and Grihya Sutras so, has to do with the rituals which are performed in the household. So, uh, certain texts which will guide the performance of these things, so are referred to by these names. So, Grihya Sutras. Then we have Dharma Sutras. So, Dharma Sutras have to do with the general code of conduct which have to be followed for the well being of society. So, that is what is referred to, and the duties which have to be done by different class of people and so on. So, this is the subject matter of Dharma Sutra and when we come to Shulva Sutras, Shulva Sutras are texts which have been primarily composed to assist the Shulva Karas in the construction of various sacrificial altars. The first sutra in some of this uh, Shulva Sutra is Atheme Agni Chayaha. Agni Chayaha, Chaya is basically a collection of uh, bricks etcetera. So, Chayanam is putting together. So, putting together to create a certain platform on which these rituals can be performed. So, what does the term Shulba mean? So, in fact, Shulva Sutra is a compound word. Shulba is one part and Sutra is another part. Sutra is a type of writing. In fact, uh, this has been the most ancient form of composing text. So, if you look at uh, the Sanskrit literature that is available to us, the most ancient ones have been in the form of sutras. So, we have this Brahma Sutra of Badarayana, we have Jaimini Sutras, we have Panini Sutras, so Ashtadhyayi, so we have Patanjali Yoga Sutras. So, all of them so have been composed in the form of what is referred to as sutra style. Of course, there are definitions for sutras. So, this uh, Shulva Sutras is a compound word wherein this shulba has a meaning of measuring shulba mane so in fact in sanskrit so most of the words are derived from the roots and the root is shulba shulba mane so mana is measuring so shulba mane in fact this uh, word can be derived uh, by different ways in fact what is called bhava vyutpatti karma vyutpatti karana vyutpatti and so on so, bhava vyutpatti, if you do this, so shulbanam shulbaha. So, this is how the word can be derived and it refers to the act of measuring. Shulbiate it is shulbaha when you say you measure something and that entity is the object of measurement and that is the uh, karma vyutpatti. And karana vyutpatti, when you say so, karana is an instrument, so by which you make measurement. So, all of them are applicable when we refer to the content of the Shulva Sutra text. So, and therefore, this compound Shulva Sutra actually means a text which discusses the act of measuring. So, obviously, the entity which is measured, the instrument which is used for measurement, so all of them will be referred to into this Shulva Sutra text. So, the Sutra itself is a very, very, very uh, uh, tightly composed text. So, you will not find uh, so uh, unnecessary words into the sutras. So, that is the very definition of sutra alpaksharam, asandigtham, saravad, vishwato mukham, and so on. And uh, the Shulva sutras obviously uh, cannot be understood on their own 
So, without either the teacher uh, or teacher plus commentator, so if teacher is not available, we resort to commentaries which have been composed at a much later period on the Shulva Sutras for understanding what does this sutra convey. There are seven Shulva Sutras, so which are available for us today. These are the texts Bodhayana, Apastamba, Katyayana, Manava, Maitrayana, Varaha and Vadhula. So, of them four or more uh, popular and uh, more studies have gone into the first to four and the later that have not been studied that much. But anyway, so according to scholars, so Bodhayana Shulva Sutra seems to be the most earliest of the Shulva Sutras which are available to us today. So, this is uh, based on certain analysis which have been done in, in the with reference to the style, with reference to completeness, with reference to archaic usage which is found in those texts. So, based on this they have uh, uh, felt that Bodhayana must be the most earliest Sulva Sutra and uh, one also uh, finds a certain sutras almost similar in later uh, for instance in Katyayana Sulva Sutra. So, we will find the same sutra repeated with minor changes. So, and it is more extensive also this Bodhayana Sulva Sutra and therefore, they feel that it is the most ancient one. Bodhayana Shulva Sutra is made up of three chapters consisting of 520 sutras and the composition is something like this. So, they have uh, commentaries as I was mentioning. So, for Bodhayana we have two commentaries one by Dwarka Natha the other by Venkateshwara Dikshita. For Apastamba we have uh, four commentaries which are identified by Kaparadhi Swamin, Karavinda Swamin, Sundar Raja, Gopala and uh, this Katya in a Shulva Sutra. So, we have one very interesting commentary by Rama or Ramachandra. So, this Rama seems to have uh, improved upon certain algorithms which have been stated in Katya in a Shulva Sutra, which I will be touching upon in my next lecture. So, we have also a very interesting commentary by Mahidhara of this Katya in a Shulva Sutra, so wherein uh, he has quoted several verses from various other things, this is also another interesting commentary. Now, uh, I will recite a couple of verses, so which is found in the commentary of Mahidhara, so wherein he defines what are the qualities that are expected of a Shulvakara. By Shulvakara I mean the one who assists, so the Vedic priest in the construction of the uh, Yajna Shala, okay. so where sacrifice is performed. So, he says Sankhyajnaha, Parimanajnaha, Samasutra Niranchakaha, so on so on. So, Sankhyajnaha means the one who is versed in arithmetic science of calculation and uh, Parimanajnaha, so one who is versed with mensuration and uh, Pariprachakaha, he should be a sort of inquirer and uh, we also have the adjective Parashastra Kutuhalaha. See, Kutuhala means a certain enthusiasm, enthusiasm in learning other disciplines also. So, today we have ended up into a certain situation wherein, so within civil engineering there will be some 20 disciplines. So, he will know only to do this, he will know only to do this, so on, so on. So, in the name of uh, getting deep into something, so the overall understanding is all gone. Anyway, so here uh, he de describes the one who should be enthusiastic to know more and more things. And uh, so, the point I want to drive through these verses is that uh, primarily, so he is not. Uh, a person who should be considered as a merely geometer who will do only that kind of a thing. Okay. So, this is what it is. And uh, there are various topics which are uh, discussed in Shulva Sutras to give you an idea as to what would be the content of a Shulva Sutra text. I have listed a few of them. For instance, you have Rekha Mana Paribhasha. See, Mana is measuring, Rekha Mana is measuring the length of a chord. So, which means Paribhasha is a certain technical term. So, they will define those technical terms. For instance, various units of measurements are used. So, what are the units of measurements? Linear measurement. Then uh, Chaturashra Karanopayaha. So, Chaturashra, Ashra means a side, Chaturashra means four sided figure. So, construction of four sided figure, square, rectangle and so on. Then uh, Karanyanayanam. So, Karani here refers to square root. Okay. So, Karani, in fact Karani has various connotations, I will discuss that uh, maybe a little later. So, the Karanyanayanam means how do we find the square root of a non square number. Okay. So, these things are discussed there. 
then kshetrakara parinamaha so parinama is a transformation so if you have a geometrical object of a particular shape you would like to transform this object into some other object and this is a uh, area preserving transformation so a square of a certain area should be transformed into a circle of the same area then obviously you need to know the value of pi so in uh, some sense so all that uh, so some approximations for that and how do you do geometrically so these are all discussed in these texts they are very interesting things and non non avi vedi viharanam so vedi as i told you is a sort of sacrificial ground yajna shala so for different sacrifices you should construct the altar in different sizes and shapes and uh, see in fact there are certain altars which have to be constructed in the form of bird a falcon so but uh, there is a certain constraint which is imposed so you should have only 120 square meters so i am just saying in some units so 120 square meters 100 square meters you should uh, construct an altar in the form of a bird so which means a lot of calculation has to go into as to what kind of bricks you have to design and it has to be of certain height also so different layers have to be arranged in a particular way so that the structural stability is also taken care so you have to just pile the bricks so all that uh, are discussed here and they also discuss about the kind of material which has to go into preparation of this this is another interesting aspect which one finds in shulva sutras regarding the construction material and the process so which has to be done to see that uh, the bricks that you create are solid enough and so on and so forth uh, then uh, how to manufacture bricks so these are all uh, the contents of a typical shulva sutra text so not every text will discuss every aspect of it okay the topics that we would discuss here is uh, roughly so i will start with the determination of cardinal direction so this is called diganayanam so dik is direction anayanam is finding so that i will do as the first thing then uh, how to construct perpendicular bisectors suppose you have determined east west line then you have to construct a perpendicular bisector to get the what are the methods which are employed then construction of uh, figures like square trapezia circles so these are all very interesting things as i told you uh, so they are just done with uh, nail and a rope so enunciation of certain geometrical principles for instance uh, the shulva sutra sulva theram okay shulva sutra is the ancient text which has the pythagorean theorem so in the most general form not only triplets so these uh, principles and uh, how do we make use of these principles see this uh, pythagorean theorem which is called bhuja kotikarna nyaya in sanskrit so this theorem is so fundamental that uh, it uh, plays a major role in trying to even transform a particular geometric object into some other shape and so on as we will see little later uh then construction of chitis so these are the various topics that we will discuss okay so determining the east west line as you can see in the diagram so here ox refers to the shanku a small stick which is well shaped and uh, there is a tip at the corner okay so it is sharpened at the top n which is ox so then you draw a circle around this and this sutra so basically tells you that you have to create a certain horizontal plane so that is what is referred to by the word sama sama means a horizontal plane so same shankum nikhaya nikhaya means sort of fixing same in a horizontal plane shanku is the stick okay so this is the device so nikhaya is having placed it well then he says shanku samitataya rajwa so rajju is a rope okay the cord so with which you will draw circle and all that you will do all measurements shanku samitataya rajwa means so you have to choose a rope of appropriate dimension which can be measured with the shanku so which means the rope has to be at least twice the shanku then only you can measure with that so it is in that sense and that has a certain astronomical significance which we will not discuss now so if the circle that you draw is too small 
then uh, while doing the shadow measurement, so the shadow need not even enter the circle here. So, what we will do is, so you create a platform, you place the stick and then you see the shadow. So, the shadow, so the length keeps on decreasing and at a certain point it will enter into the circle and then in the afternoon it will move out of the circle. So, these two points have to be primarily marked and they are A and B in this figure. Points A and B, so primarily define the east, uh, west and the east points. Okay. So, once you draw a line, so A B, so A is marked in the forenoon as the shadow enters into the circle and B is marked as the shadow exits from the circle. So, this experiment can be performed anywhere, so only thing that you have to ensure is a flat surface. In fact, uh, my friend Professor Srinivas, so once he was mentioning that uh, his friend, so consulted somebody uh, regarding Vastu. So, then that person came up and then said your house is not properly oriented in the east west direction. He was narrating to me once. So, this fellow said oh what do I do and so on. So, then uh, apparently he asked how did that person who came for surveying tell you that your house is not properly oriented. So, apparently he said he brought a small device where a magnetic needle was there and then. So, he said that so this is not properly oriented. So, this uh, magnetic needle, so how precise it is? I mean any device can deflect the magnetic, so your own card perhaps, <laughs> so can deflect the magnetic needle and that will not give you the exact east west direction. So, in fact the uh, sort of fool proof method is this method, there is a technotronic age wherein there are so many devices and this itself the precision is not something, so which is so reliable. So, this is a very uh, simple technique by which we will be able to see and later when they saw that this is exactly oriented. Anyway, the point I am trying to convey here is this is a very very simple experiment and a full proof experiment which can be done at any place on any given day. So, which will give you the exact east west direction. <coughs> okay. So, this is a slide, so which has uh, been prepared based on a certain verse which is given in an astronomical work called Tantra Sangraha. So, which myself and Professor Sri Ram uh, were studying at some point of time. So, this is a very interesting uh, formula which is uh, given here. So, if you look at this uh, the formula, it is a sort of complicated fairly complex formula which involves so a lot of trigonometric functions and the inverse of trigonometric function. In the left hand side what you find is t. So, t basically refers to the time and in the right hand side what you find is phi and delta. So, phi refers to the latitude of the place and delta the declination of the sun. So, what I am trying to say here is, so with this simple device Shanku, you will be able to precisely tell what the time is provided you are able to see the uh, where the sun is, the zenith distance of the sun which is z here, once it is known you will be able to get the time. So, this device is a very very profound device. So, once the latitude, the latitude itself can be of course, uh, found using this Shanku at any given place, what is the latitude of the place, a simple experiment will tell you. So, this uh, formula is uh, primarily conveyed, so to give you a certain idea as to how even profound things can be done with this very simple device and uh, this also tells you the kind of sophistication that has gone into. So, as I was mentioning, so one of the commentators very clearly explains as to why you need to conduct this experiment to determine east west. So, this Mahidhara says, see Udayasthananam Bahutvat Pratidinam Binnatvat Aniyamena Prachi Jnatum Nasakya. See Udayasthana is the rising point. So, if you look at the eastern part of the horizon, so the rising point of the sun keeps on shifting, Bahutvat means it is many. Pratidinam Binnatvat, in fact it varies by a very very small amount every day and Prachi east cannot be known by simply looking at the eastern part of the horizon. So, finally, he concludes Tataha Arkatu Prachi Jnanam Durghatam. So, it is difficult to simply determine by looking at the sun. So, therefore, you need to conduct this experiment. So, having done uh, this experiment, so you have to find out the perpendicular direction that is the next problem. So, this is actually done in a couple of ways. One is Rajvabhyasanam which is 
folding of the cord. See, you have drawn a line now, you have determined the east west, now you have to draw a perpendicular. So, all that you have is nails and rope. But today, what we do is primarily this later method, Matsya Chitranam, which they call as by drawing fish figure. So, I will show this one by one. See, the first by cord folding is as simple as that. Suppose, you have determined point A and B, all that they say is you have to take a rope which is twice A B and then you have to mark the center of this. See, by folding it, you will be able to mark the center of this rope. So, once you do that, all that you need to do is you have to pull. So, tie at the ends and then pull it on both these sides. So, one side it will give you north, the other side will give you south. So, this is this will give you this perpendicular to the east west line. So, this is the first method. The other method is which is followed by uh, even uh, if you ask any school student, all that he will do is he will take a compass and then so he will draw a semicircle and then put it on the other side, draw the other circle. So, this creates a figure, see. So, a figure like this. So, this looks like a fish and therefore, it is called Matsya Chitranam. Matsya means fish. So, by drawing fish figure, you will be able to get the perpendicular direction. Now, I come to a very interesting construction, which has been discussed in Bodha and Shula Sutra for constructing a square. See, Chaturashram Chikirshan, Chaturashra is square, Chikirshan desirous of doing. So, he says Yavat Chikirshet. So, whatever be the dimension, the side of the square, okay. So, he says you take a rope of that length, okay. Tavatim Rajum. So, he says Ubhayataha Pasham Krutva. So, in this figure, so P and Q refers to the tip of the rope and P Q basically gives you the side of the square. So, what is to be done is, so you mark the midpoint of it and uh, you have to fix it, fix a nail. Then draw a circle, is it clear? So, you just in the next figure, so O is the nail and you draw a circle. So, having done this, see all that we employ is couple of nails and then rope, that is all in trying to draw a square. So, he says Madhye Shankum Nihanyat means you uh, Madhye O at the center fix the nail. Tasmin Pasho Pratimuncha Lakshanena Mandalam Pariliket draw a circle. Then Vishkambhanta Yoho, the term Vishkambha which you will encounter refers to the diameter of the circle. Vistara, Vishkambha etcetera refer to the diameter. PQ is the diameter here. Vishkambhanta Yoho Anta Shanku Nihanyat. See, you place a nail at P, you place a nail at Q. Then he says Purvasmin Pasham Pratimuchya. See, Pratimuchya so is basically Dhritva, tying. So, it is a very special usage. In fact, this is one of the uh, words which one can find in the ancient literature. So, so Muchya is normally same sort of removing, but Prati is a word when this adjective goes, it is tying. Okay, Prati Muchya, tying, latching. So, then he says you tie it and then the same string is used and you have to draw a circle. Okay. Similarly, uh, you tie it and then draw another circle. Okay. So, Pashena Mandalam Parilikhet, Evam Aparasmin. So, these two red circles are drawn. Te Yatra Sameyatam. See, wherever these two circles intersect, so which is E and F. See, so these are two points. With them, you draw a line. So, then you have to mark points R and S. Okay. So, te na dviti yam vishkambhama the points R and S are done. Vishkambhanta yoho shanku nihanyat. Again, see we fixed a nail here, we fixed a nail here. Then he says you fix two more nails here and then that is all you have got the square. How do you do? So, then starting from P, you have to draw a circle. See, as it was done, then you draw a circle, then you draw a circle, then you draw a circle. This is all he says. Evam dakshinena, evam paschat, evam uttarataha. So, once these four circles are drawn, so these dotted circles, all that has to be done is wherever these two circles interact, intersect, you have to mark the point and you will get the square A, B, C, D. This is a very beautiful construction which has been discussed in Bodha and Shulva Sutra to draw a square, whatever be the dimension, okay. it can be as long as you want, as big as you want. <coughs> then we have uh, 
this uh, so called Pythagorean uh, okay, theorem, so discussed here and it is a explicit statement. Dirgha Chaturashrasya Akshnaya Rajuhu Parshvamani Tirjangmani Cha Yet Prithak Bhute Kurutaha Tadubhayam Karoti. This is the statement of Pythagorean theorem. Okay. So, so Dirgha Chaturashra, Chaturashra as I said refers to a four sided figure. Okay. Chaturashra, Ashra is side. Dirga Chaturashra means elongated. Elongated basically refers to a rectangle. Dirga Chaturashrasya. Rajuhu is rope or line. Akshnaya Rajuhu. The word Akshnaya is not to be found in the classical literature. It can be found uh, in the Vedic literature. And in fact, there are various instances in which the word Akshnaya has been used. So, this has been defined by the commentators of the Shulvakara also. In fact, Akshnaya. Uh, in fact, today I incidentally saw in Chandogya Upanishad the word Akshnaya has been used and Shankara in his commentary very beautifully defines it uh, Akshnaya Kona Chidrataha Antara. So, this is all he says. So, Kona if you want to say see for instance if you draw a rectangle, so this is a Kona corner. Kona Chidrataha Antara means this particular thing is what is referred to as Akshnaya. So, Akshnaya Rajuhu refers to this. So, this is a Dirga Chaturashra. Dirga Chaturashra Akshnaya Rajuhu. So, Parshvamani. So, this can be taken as Parshvamani and this can be taken as Tiryangmani. So, all that is said here is if you think of drawing a square here and then drawing another square here, if you draw a square, so this will give you the area of these two. So, Parshvamani Tiryangmani cha yat prathak bhute kurutaha tadubhayam karoti, this is something which is very well known, tadubhayam karoti. So, whatever be the area that is created by the two sides, so the hypotenuse also gives that. So, this is basically the Pythagorean theorem. In fact, uh, in yet another version as I was mentioning earlier, the Katyayana version is primarily the Bodhayana Sutra as it is with the only thing added Iti Kshetra Jnanam. Iti Kshetra Jnanam can be understood in uh, two different ways. So, I would say that this is the most uh, fundamental theorem which is to be known in this planar geometry which cannot be dispensed with and in fact the applications are many 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 fold so even in very complex calculations like the period of eclipse etc so all that we use is primarily this a sort of right angle triangle and so yet see in fact the commentators yet phalakam samachaturashra dvayam kurutaha see this is a very very clear explanation yet phalakam the word phala refers to area so if you consider one side whatever be the area created by that side whatever be the area created so, that particular thing creates that area. So, Kona Sutra Bhuta Rajuhu Karoti. So, this is what is the meaning of this sutra. Okay. This Manava Shulva Sutra also states this theorem, but in a slightly different form. So, it says Ayamam Ayama Gunam Vistaram Vistarenatu Samasya Vargamulam Yat Tat Karnam Tadvido Viduhu. This is a very, very clear statement. So, Ayama and Vistara, they refer to the length and the breadth of this rectangle. So, Ayamam Ayama Gunam. So, you multiply Ayama by Ayama, Vistara by Vistara. So, which means, so if you consider one side as A, find A square, then Vistara find B square. Samasya, Samasya means adding them together. See, Varga Molam is square root of that, square root of A square plus B square is C square, that kind of a thing. And the Varga Moolam is square root. So, that gives you, so this is what essentially it is Ayama square plus Vistara square, square root is Karna. So, this is what it says. So, soon after giving the theorem, so Dirga Chaturashrasya Akshnaya Rajuhu, so Bodhayana in the very next sutra gives several triplets. So, here is the sutra. Tasam Trika Chatushkayo, Trika is 3, Chatushka is 4. So, 1 triplet is 3, 4, 5. Okay. Then 
द्वादशिक पंचिको द्वादश इज ट्वेल पंचिक इज फै देन पंचदशिक अष्टिको फिफ्टीन एट सो सेवेंटी स्क्वेर देन सप्तिक चतुर्विशति की सेवन अंड ट्वेंटी फोर सो इज ट्वेंटी फै स्क्वेर द्वादशिक पंचत्रिशको सो ट्वेल थर्टी फै इज थर्टी सेवन पंचदशिक षत्रिशिको सो आल दैट हि से उपलब्धि इतु अंड सो वन सो यू कैन गो ऑन कंस्ट्रक्टिंग सच ट्रिप्लेट्स सो गिव्स ए फ्यू ट्रिप्लेट्स एज एक्सापल ऑफ दि theorem which he stated in the most general form in the previous sutra ashrayana sutra so gives a couple of uh, other triplets so i am just listing them and uh, one could ask the question as to why he chose only these triplets there are so many triplets which can be constructed so one can think of uh, perhaps that the sulva sutra sulvakaras thought of a certain general formula and plugging in certain values you will be able to get those triplets so that is what i'll show you in the next couple of minutes for instance uh, if we look at one of the relations which has been given in katyayana sulva sutra so this is a algebraic uh, relation see n a square so can be written in this particular form is it fine so katyayana sulva sutra so doesn't present it in this particular form but in a certain context so in finding the value of root n you give a you find a certain description which can be written in this particular form okay datta so bibhuti bhushan datta and in fact he, he was one of the pioneers in initiating the study of indian mathematics the contributions of indians so he is a very great scholar he has written a text called the science of shulbas so wherein i mean he has tried to analyze as to what would be the rationale in trying to present these example soon after the theorem was stated so this uh, if we make a substitution n is equal to m square and we plug in a is equal to 1 so then this transforms into this particular form so if we plug in the value m is equal to 357 so immediately you get these triplets okay so 3 4 5 5 12 13 7 4 and 25 so if we rewrite this equation see in this particular form and then you substitute the value 2 4 6 it immediately gives you three more triplets so in this you can see that so these two triplets are one the same but the other are different okay the other example which has been given by bodhayana for instance 15 36 39 how did bodhayana get that see here the principle behind generating the rational triangles this is another way of uh, looking at it so here uh, there is a vedi which is called saumika vedi and in the saumika vedi what should be the length what should be the it is not actually a rectangle but it is slightly different kind of a thing so wherein uh, it is a sort of trapezium kind of a thing so wherein so the length of the sides and so on are uh, specified in that context so we find uh, these sutras in ashala apastamba trika chatushkayoho panchika akshnaya rajjuhu see trika chatushkayoho akshnaya rajjuhu as i told you is the hypotenuse trika chatushkayoho if the sides are 3 and the 4 then akshnaya rajjuhu is 5 then it says tabhihi trirabhyastabhihi amsau chaturabhyastabhihi shroni see in fact uh, so this can be sort of written like this see trirabhyastabhihi abhyasta is sort of multiplication okay so you take 3 and then uh, do this process so then you will get 12 16 and 20 so if you take 4 and then do this process then you will get 15 20 and 25 then he says dwadashik panchikayo ho start with 5 12 and tabhihi amsau dvirabhyas tabhihi you take 2 and then do this process then you will get 15 36 and 39 so this is the kind of triplet see as i was mentioning so this has been given by bodhayana also anyway so the principle that seems to have uh, 
employed here in arriving at this triplet, one of the speculations is the that they had used a general formula and then substituted see for instance if you see 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, you get all the triplets that are found and given by Bodhayana and later by other author Apastamba also. You get various in triplets and all these measures can be uh, taken to be the measure of the various Vedis, so which they have used for various sacrifices. So, there is an interesting application of uh, this uh, Shulba theorem, I will uh, discuss one application now. So, Nana Chaturashre Samasyan, Samasyan means desirous of putting together, which means you have uh, two squares of different size and you want to create a square whose area will be the sum of these squares. Okay. So, Samasyan, so it is a geometrical construction, so all that you need to do is, so closely follow this figure. So, A, B, C, D is one square and C, G, H, I is another square, so these are the two squares and now you want to construct a square whose area is sum of these two squares, see Nana Chaturashre Samasyan desirous of doing Kaniyasaha Karanya. Kaniya saha means of the smaller one. So, Karani here refers to side. Kaniya saha Karanya by the side of this smaller square. Okay. Varshiya saha Vridha Mullikhet. So, Varshiya saha means the one which is larger in dimension. So, Varshiya so Vridha Mullikhet, all that he says is you have to take the dimension CG and then mark it in the larger square which is same as BE. Okay. So, Varshi Yaso Vridha Mullikhet. Then Vridhasya Akshnaya Rajuhu, here the term Vridha refers to a rectangle. Okay. So, it is not Vridha, it is Vridha. So, Vridhasya Akshnaya Rajuhu, so the diagonal of this, see Akshnaya Rajuhu which is AE, Samasyatoho Parshamani Bhavati, see Parshamani is sight. So, Samasyatoho Parshamani. So, of the square which you want to construct as the sum of the area of these two squares, Parshamani will give you the side. So, basically what you will get is A K H E. So, this is the square. Okay. So, with this, so I will conclude my lecture today and we will have the next part of Vedas and Sulla Sutras in the next lecture. Thank you. Yes, sir. Using the stick, uh, you told how to find out the east west direction. Correct, correct. Yeah. Similarly, to find out the uh, time, yeah. uh, there is a small slogan. Yeah. Could you tell me that we have shown only the trigonometrical uh, calculations uh -huh. from the shadow, using the shadow, yeah. to find out the time? No, no, no. See, what I said was this formula is encoded in the form of a verse that we have decoded in the form of modern notation and that is what it translates to is what I said. This uh, stick which is Shanku is a very, very uh, effective device to determine so many things. So, in fact, uh, there is a chapter called uh, Triprasnadhikara in almost all the astronomical texts you will find and the device which uh, forms the basis of this chapter to conduct various experiments and determine various quantities of astronomical interest is the Shanku. They will place it and then uh, so based on the shadow you will be able to determine the latitude of the place. In fact, the three prashna means three questions. So, Dik, Desha, Kala. So, Dik Jnanam, Desha Jnanam. By Desha Jnanam we mean you want to know where you are. So, where you are essentially is given by latitude and longitude and in fact, latitude is the most important thing. Latitude basically tells you how the time will fluctuate, see how much uh, duration of daylight will be available for you to do the day to day transactions. So, the shlokas of course, we can go back and then uh, tell you, but it is not a simple shloka where you, this shloka basically gives the description of the terms in the formula. So, what is to be multiplied by what, what is to be divided by what. My question is, but you know by the same argument, then the shadow of the Roman should also fluctuate on a day to day no, basis. No, no, it will not. 
see, I'll tell you. So naively, it will sound to you that way. But the point is, this variation in the rising point is due to change in declination of the sun. The ecliptic and equator are inclined, so by about 23 degrees. So from the east point, sun will move to 23 degrees towards the north, return back and then south. So if you know the day on which it is going to be exactly so in the east point and then it may, so this will happen on the equinoctial day. But suppose you have to do uh, the construction on any given day say at any given place, so this will be the most reliable method. The point is on a given day, so the path traced by the sun will be almost parallel to the equator. So, leaving out the very minor change in the declination, so within a few hours in which you take the shadow measurement. So, the path will be, so this is this path is apparent path which is due to the rotation of the earth and therefore, the path that is traced by the sun in the background, so will be more or less parallel to the equator and therefore, when so it does not matter how far it is moved from the equinoctial point, wherever be the rise. So, there will be a corresponding shift in this side also. So, and therefore, the points that you will get by this, ah, by this will be, so the line that you get will be parallel to the east west line. So, by connecting these two points. So, but looking at that, so if you say this is the rising point, that rising point will be shifted from the equinoctial point, so depending upon the declination. If the declination happens to be 0, it will be exactly east point. So, that is the point. 